The strand editor now has a section where all the profile curves are in one place. We can now click on the profile curve button to toggle between curves. If we want to adjust the shape or the scale to the middle of the hair tube, right click on the root curve button and insert a middle profile curve. With this, we now have an extra control along the tube. We can insert another middle curve anytime if we need more shaping control along the hair tube. We can also click on the Even Out button to space out all the middle profile curves. The ability to draw hair tube with paint effect brush is added. Like our paint effect to curve tool, we will need to create a UV to the mesh first. Then simply select a preset and start painting. If the brush is too small, hold down B and left mouse drag to adjust the scale. If we want to have the strands to stick to the mesh, turn off the paint at depth, and now the hair tubes will be drawn on the surface. Let's create a new preset for the paint effects brush. Once a preset is created, we can see the new preset appears on the UI and now the settings will be applied to each tube we've drawn. Next, a geometry curve toggle is added. This is to replace the old geometry unlock toggle. Instead of working off selected curves, we can now choose to select the tube geometry. To move a strand, we will still need to do that in the curve mode. This feature is added to allow UV editing easier. When in geometry mode, selected strands will display their UV directly in the UV editor. We will go into Layers and Shader next. Each layer for the Hair Tube Builder is assigned to a Lambert shader by default. The prefix of the shader will match the name of the layer. When we are in Geometry mode, we can see the UV on each strand by selecting it. If there's no UV, turn on Auto UV checkbox and pick a UV type. We can assign a noise pattern to the shader to give us some visualization of the hair strands. Instead of going into each strand one by one, we can use the copy-paste function and paste the UV to all other strands. I will repeat the process to get some visualization on the shader for another layer. Adjusting the subdivision or shape type changes would mess up our UV in the previous version. This is due to topology differences. In this version, the UVs can be adjusted and will be remembered if there is any topology changes, like subdivision or shape type changes. When moving the UVs, please keep it vertically laid out. If it's tilted, the UVs cannot be retained properly. Multiple strands adjustment is now possible in this version. We can now adjust the settings to all the strands attribute sliders and the shape type at once. In order to apply the profile shapes, we can utilize the copy paste function. A new toggle CV label button is added. We can now select the label directly to assign crease CVs. We can also use it to set our UV seam.
Last but not least, a new library feature is added. We can now export or import our hair strands across scenes. In order to export, we must have a category created first. Then, with strands selected, give it a name and hit save. It will capture a screenshot. When exporting, please isolate the hair strands first. This will allow proper screenshot framing. Let's export the entire hairstyle. To import, simply click on a library item and click on import. We will see the imported strands are brought in with a random prefix added to the layer. We can rename it. With this, we can now bring any parts of strands or entire hair into another scene. We can also delete a library item, just select it, and click on the delete button. Or the entire category by right-clicking on the category and delete. 